Lots of outpouring of grief for the Queen will be genuine. I know good people like my late grandma who really did look up to her. Some other reactions, though, have been positively weird. These are some of the most notable. So the first wave of weirdness came from journalists and Twitter personalities while news of the Queen's ill health spread. ITV's Robert Peston mawkishly tweeted this. A black cloud has descended on the Palace of Westminster after the troubling news about the Queen's health. Senior MPs from all parties look grey and solemn. Some top GCSE creative writing there from ITV's most senior political reporter. Give him a gold star. At the same time, others chose to lash out. Piers Morgan's son tweeted this. Sad thing is there will be people in this country celebrating this. They're the ones we need to focus on deporting. I suppose you can only blame the parents. But if anger is well known as a stage of grief, horniness is perhaps more unusual. Telegraph columnist Andrew Lillico tweeted this. At times like this, one notices the details one might otherwise ignore, like how perfect her eyebrows are here. I really hope they give him a speaking opportunity at the funeral. The next round of weirdness came after the Queen had passed, when the baton was transferred to corporations. Almost immediately, as news came in, fast food giants changed their logos to monochrome. And this is from Domino's. Everyone at Domino's joins the nation and the world in mourning the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Our thoughts and condolences are with the royal family. A really touching tribute there. Um, some even more out of place mourning came from Anne Summers. So if you went on their website yesterday, uh, you can see rest in peace, Queen Elizabeth II. Thank you, your majesty. And then underneath it, you can buy lingerie or dildos. In a mark of respect, LGBT clubs, including GAY and Heaven, closed their doors, to which someone replied, why would you close Heaven when she's trying to get in? Very good point. Well made. I think they're only closed for one night. You can have another go tomorrow. And uh, as well as pizzas, lingeries and clubbing, the Queen's passing has also had an effect on weather forecasts. The Met Office tweeted this. We are saddened by the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Our thoughts are with her family and all those affected by this news. As a mark of respect during this time of national mourning, we will only be posting daily forecasts and warnings. So, as one Twitter user said today, ain't no sunshine when she's gone. You, you, if the sun comes out in the afternoon, you won't know because you only get one weather forecast a day um, in a mark of respect for the Queen. Of course, there is no need to fret, though. If you were worried about a dearth of information as to what's going on in our skies, you can always turn to the Daily Mail. This was their report. Astonishing moment. A cloud resembling Queen Elizabeth floats over English town just hours after she died. Phenomenal. And I've got just one more for you. This is Tracy Crouch, Tory MP for Chatham and Aylesford, speaking in the Commons debate following the Queen's death. We stepped to speaker last night as we sat as a family and watched the news break of her death. Tears openly rolled down my cheeks and that of my other half. Our six-year-old took my hand in his and said... Don't worry, Mummy. The King will look after us now. Oh. He is right. God save the King. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, is, he is right. God save the King. The King will look after us now. Aaron, have we all become a nation of cringy corporations and, I mean, children? The, parlor, the House of Commons today is like nursery school. It's very, very embarrassing. Also, I could have yeah. picked hundreds more examples like this. I mean, it's, it's not very dignified, is it? Michael, I've got a very simple question for you and all of our, our, our audience watching this evening. What the hell happened to this country? <laughs> what the hell? This is a, my father's Iranian. He came to this country and he came to a country, he, I mean, and this was his experience when he came here, right? Stiff up a blip, very reservist. You really can't read people. Though. You know, they're really, there's this veneer you can't get behind. It takes a while to get to know them. Now you've got somebody in Parliament saying about how she was crying and she was comforted by her child. A parliamentarian. If you said that to my old man, you know, I was, when I was young, go, going to school, you still had the, the old boys who'd done their national service. If they saw that on the TV, they would say, who the hell is this woman? She, what, what is she doing in politics? I wouldn't want her representing me. And there is this very strange, like you say, mawkish sensibility, which has just become the norm. I don't know where it's come. I really don't know where it's come from, Michael. It's a complete inversion of all the stereotypes that the English in particular like to think about themselves, about reserved, you know, 
Oh yeah, the, the Labour front bench is so reserved. All of them have got a bloody a black AVI as their Twitter profile picture. It's not it's not a crowdfunding campaign for Amnesty International. The Queen died. You know, I think that's disrespectful. And I think the other things you just talked about there are kind of disrespectful. And it's also the gratuitous self-praise. Oh, we're so humble. We don't need anybody's like, you know, validation. That's all Parliament seems to be at the moment, the last 24 hours, is a constant exercise in self-validation. Wonderful speech by Boris Johnson. Liz Truss, two days ago, she's saying three days ago, we've had 20 years of low growth. Now she's saying we've had 20 years of prosperity and success. Which one is it? The Queen, wonderful range, you know, a fantastic era, a great time for the United Kingdom. Hold on, you were running for the Tory leadership saying the last two decades have been a complete shambles and a mess and you wanted to sort Britain out. Which one is it? Success or failure? Of course, the failure isn't, it's not, you know, Elizabeth II is not accountable for that. But it's, it's just a very strange sort of rhetoric. Establishment figures can be a bit more certain about who they are and how they appear in times like this. So they, need, they can make maybe less effort. And I, that's kind of how it reads to me until that Tory MP came up and she looked positively ridiculous. The idea you're being comforted by your child because a, a woman of um, a woman of 96 has died. Okay. I think most, most people in most places in history would find that rather, rather odd. Okay. I mean, maybe I'm being mean. Maybe I'm, more, I'm half Iranian. Maybe I'm more English than these people up here. I don't know. I find it very strange, Michael. And another thing as well is the thing from Piers Morgan's son is the sort of clout chasing that this entails. Oh God, these horrible leftists, let's deport them. He's tweeting that to get clout and gain Twitter followers off the back of a woman dying who he claims, he claims to respect. I mean, he patently doesn't. When somebody dies who you respect, you don't start sending out tweets to get followers and get clout when he's checking the updates. How many likes and retweets have I got? That isn't respect. Something very strange has happened to the psyche of these people in the last couple of decades. Very strange. I, you know, I, I, I'm a socialist. I'm a Republican. But it, it, it's pretty obvious to me as an observation that quite significant changes to the sensibilities of, of monarchists and conservatives, some, not all, right? But in the establishment, the visible sort of rhetoric you see in the media and in politics, it's bizarre. And it's a million miles away from the myth-making they like to tell themselves. Mm -hmm.